Come on into the library. It's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come and be a story maker. Story maker. Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and a magical maestro, at your service. Right, who's got any ideas for a story? Oh, I do. Um, well, sort of. Mm. Well, pray tell young sir. Mm. Hop to it. Mm. I don't want to hop. Can't I just tell you? Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Well, the children today were talking about having a tea party. Mm. And I was wondering if we could have one. Oh, mm. yes, yes, yes. Let's have a tea party. Mm. Although, I don't like tea. <laughs> My dear is Jelly Philly. <laughs> tea parties are not for just drinking tea. Oh. You can have squash or milk if you like. Oh, right. What else do we have to do? Well, we drink tea or milk or squash. Well, actually, I'm not rightly sure. Oh, oh, I've got an idea. <laughs> oh, yes? Well, why don't we ask the machine to help us? Hey. Brilliant idea, Jackson. Ah, a tea party. Mm, a tea bag should do the trick. Ah. Just one more thing. A bit of imagination. Are you ready? Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. We've got a playbook, and it's called Tiana's Tea Party. Tiana was having a very busy day. Her friend Teddy was coming round for tea later, and there was lots to do. First of all, she had to make the house. And put up the doorbell. Once the house was ready, Tiana found a table and set plates and cups, saucers and a teapot. And then she set to work making some sandwiches. Just then she heard the doorbell ring. It was Teddy. Hello, wave Tiana. Tiana poured the tea and had to help Teddy to her sandwich as her paws were a bit stiff. Mmm, yum, yum. Just then there was another ring at the door. Who could that be, thought Tiana. It was Mum carrying a tray of real cakes and tea. Room for one more, Mum asked. Tiana gave everyone a cake. And drank her warm mug of tea. And they had the best tea party ever. 
Ooh. Well, Tiana's had her tea party. Ooh. It's our turn now. Oh, Jackson, dear fellow, I'm afraid a tea party would be totally out of the question. Why? Oh. Because it's way past tea time. Mm. We'll have to have a midnight feast instead. <gasps> So first we have to decide who to invite. Ooh. I tell you what, why don't you write out some name cards and place them around the table for our guests okay. while I go and sort out the food. <laughs> there you are, Boswell. That's where you sit. <laughs> That's Boswell, our cat. Uh, I sit here, Milton over there. Yes, and, and I sit here opposite hmm. the Queen. Hmm. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Here we are, Jackson, Jelly, Milton, that's me, Boswell the cat and the Queen. Mm. I see we're all here for our midnight feast, yes. except, oh, except for the Queen. Mm. Oh, dear. Oh. She hasn't turned up. No. Oh, never mind. I think I have everything we need. A saucer of milk for Boswell the cat, uh, a drink for each of us, Yay. some biscuits, mm. and a bone for the dog. Oh. <laughs> but Milton, we don't have a dog. Oh, yes. Um, I tell you what. What? I'll use this bone for a story. Ooh. Carry on. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. Oh, carry on. Now, this is where we need your help. You ready? Imagine. Imagine. Imagine a story. It's Kevin the Spaceman. Thanks for your help. And the story's called Aliens. Kevin and Spanner in space to explore. Seeking out planets never heard of before. Kevin and Spanner had landed their rocket on a strange looking planet. It was green and sort of crusty and covered in odd looking holes. Whoopee! Rabbits live down holes, barked Spanner, and rushed off to investigate. Careful, Spanner! You never know what might be down a hole, called Kevin. Spanner didn't care. He was dying to chase a rabbit. He frolicked around and around the holes. Suddenly, he heard a strange sound and stopped. He thought it was coming out of one of the holes. It was dark and hard to see. There didn't seem to be anything there. And then suddenly, a little green alien popped up from the hole. Whee-hoo! shouted the alien. Spanner howled and made a run for it back to Kevin. What is it, boy? asked Kevin kindly. But Spanner just trembled. Aliens started popping up and down all over the place. Plong, plang, plung, plod, One of the aliens popped up in front of them. He was very strange looking. Hello, it said. Where are your friends? asked Kevin. We'd like to meet you all. Oh, there's only me said the alien. Kevin was confused. Now, look here, said Kevin. I've just seen at least seven of you. Oh, me, said the alien. I just move very fast. My name is Pling Plong Plang Plung Plod Clip Whee! Welcome to Planet Green. This is Spanner, said Kevin. He's a dog. Hi, Spanner, said the alien. Ruff, answered Spanner, deciding to keep things formal for the moment. Please follow me, said the alien, and with that he jumped back down the hole. Kevin and Spanner looked at each other, shrugged, and then they jumped too. Instantly they found themselves inside the softest, warmest, greenest room they'd ever seen. Welcome to my home, said the alien. Do you like it? It's very nice, said Kevin. Green's very fashionable this year. Being an alien, I can grant one wish, said their new friend. If you think of your most favourite thing, then it will appear. Wow, thought Kevin. <laughs> Suddenly, a pile of bones appeared in front of Spanner out of nowhere. Spanner had wasted no time in thinking of his favourite thing. Spanner licked his lips happily. He knew what he was going to have for dinner tonight.
Mm. That was a great story, wasn't it? Mm. Mm. I'm glad that Spanner got all those bones for his tea. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Have you left me some of the midnight feast? Yes, Milton, we left you two biscuits and a drink. Well, one and a bit biscuits. <laughs> oh, this midnight feast is great fun. What a pity the Queen could not oh, be uh, here. Uh, I've got an idea. What? We can use her place name to put in the story machine and make another story. Oh, mm. what an excellent idea. Mm. Mm. Join in with me. Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a blue cow story, and it's called Blue Cow and the Queen. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was looking at the green grass. I wonder what it would be like to go to a party in a garden. She's off again, said the other cows. So. Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a ticket to a garden party, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for the gardens at Buckingham Palace. And then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. There were lots of ladies wearing big hats and men in very smart suits and tables and tables of cucumber sandwiches, cakes, buns and pots and pots of tea. Here you are, madam, said a waiter, and he gave Blue Cow a cup of tea and a bun. Plop! A huge drop of water plopped into Blue Cow's teacup. Plip! Plop! Plip! Plop! Plip! Quick, everyone, indoors, said the waiter. It's raining. Everyone dashed inside a big tent. Excuse me, said a very posh lady standing next to Blue Cow. Blue Cow turned around. It was the Queen. Moo, eh, exclaimed Blue Cow and started to curtsy, but she lost her balance. She fell backwards onto the table. Whee! Cucumber sandwiches shot up into the air. Cakes whizzed up and landed on ladies' hats. Buns somersaulted into the air and landed on men's noses. Blue Cow landed in a heap on the floor. Everyone went quiet and the Queen walked over to Blue Cow. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. Don't worry. It's the funniest thing one has seen for years. One is most amused. Come and sit next to me, said the Queen. Moo! And Blue Cow sat next to the Queen and they had tea together. Do come again, said the Queen, but don't worry about curtsying next time. <laughs> oh, that was a good tea party, wasn't mm, it? Nearly as good as ours. <laughs> what was that? <gasps> it's a midnight telegram from the Queen. Well. <gasps> what does it say? Oh. Thank you for one's invitation to your midnight feast. One has already had tea with a charming blue cow, and mm. one must get one's beauty sleep. Yours, thankfully, the Queen. Wow! The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories, and we bid you goodbye. Story makers, story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous. Stories oh, are fun. Bye, story makers. Mm. See you again soon.